Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we will walk you through uh, research data management guidelines uh, that apply to the most of the researchers and uh, at the University of Bern, and specifically to researchers in life sciences and provide a blueprint that can be adapted to specific needs. At the Open Science, we are seven data stewards supporting researchers in research data management from subject-specific disciplines. We are offering training sessions and workshops in research uh, data management throughout the whole research data life cycle. Last year, in 2023, we received a request from the Institute of Tissue Medicine and Pathology to develop a guideline in documentation for researchers of the Institute. The guide is um, about the data documentation and is to be provided to present staff at the next appraisal interviews or as soon as possible and as an integral part at the beginning of the appointment for new staff. Research personnel and persons involved in research are familiar with and adhere to the principles of scientific integrity, notably falsification, publication, plagiarism, as defined by the Senate of the University of Bern regulations concerning scientific integrity. Confidential information, including unpublished data, information on novel concepts of research or strategies, and new research projects presented during in-house seminars or internal discussions, or at other internal events such as research retreats, are to be considered strictly confidential and cannot be distributed or communicated to individuals outside the Institute without their written consent from the responsible scientist and responsible principal investigator. All research activities performed in or during employment shall be systematically and thoroughly documented according to the specific requirements of each research group, but generally in a way that they are easily understandable and reusable for any peer in the same field according to the findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable principle. Any research activities involving patient-developed uh, biological samples or patient data must be planned, conducted, and documented in accordance with the Swiss Human Research Act. All studies uh, using such material or data need to be approved by the respective ethics committee. The laboratory notebook, if applicable, and associated electronic files and or biological samples reagents generated during the experimental work described in these files must remain in the laboratory when the investigating scientist leaves the institution. The scientist might make copies of any of notebook use, including electronic files, to take with. Similarly, digital data, including digital lab books, must be stored and organized in an understandable manner that other researchers would be able to understand it in a dedicated electronic data storage platform recognized by the institute or university. And finally, so that uh, there is an information for students needs to be aware of research data management plans and data repositories. Here is also the active link and we will share the presentation with you so that you can get recommendation from outside from Open Science team. This joint forces of data stewards from the Open Science team and researchers from the Institute of Medicine and Pathology aim to provide a guideline to PhD students, postdocs, and research staff from all eight faculties of the University of Bern throughout the whole research data life cycle and guidance on how to properly document research data systematically according to the specific requirements for each research discipline and group, but generally in a way that they are accessible, findable, understandable, citable, and reusable for any peer in the same field according to the FAIR principles. Therefore, our recommendations in research data management allow data use and reuse as well as seamless interaction for staff working on the same project. Here is also active link you will find in the slide. The data management guidelines so that covers various aspects, including ethical data collection, data reuse, data processing, data documentation, and data and metadata preparation for publication. It emphasizes the importance of preparing software for publication alongside research data. It is crucial 
to efficiently manage data as it is a key for ensuring the credibility and reproducibility of your research. So that basically throughout the whole project life cycle. Federica will further focus on the research data management guideline, available sources and support. So basically, as Olga explained, the idea of what, what we end up having is this uh, research data management guide that you can see there in the link. My idea for the second part of this is to sort of explain a bit how someone from the beginning, just downloading the file, can sort of navigate the file and realize if it's useful or not. Remember, this is a very general guide. So it's one of the, let's say, the first approach for us to sort of help researchers in this whole uh, research data life cycle. So it's going to be general enough for people to start uh, answering their questions, but I'm not sure it's enough for all the researchers to ask full questions. So the content itself, so I'll describe it point by point, is the starting, so I, I se separated by, by chapters. So the first chapter is mostly focusing on how to start the planning for the research data management. Then a little bit more about specifically regarding the data collection and processing. So basically we're following the, the life cycle ideally. Then we go into a little bit more the uh, details about the data documentation and metadata. For that, there's also uh, clickable files here that you can find regarding the, the general readme file in English version. And also the recommendations that Olga already mentioned for those specific aspects of the data documentation. The specifics for data storage, security and backup, a little bit about ethical, legal, and security issues. And finally, about publication of the research data, the code, and so on. But to me, the most interesting part for a new reader of the guide are the seventh part, that is the annexes. Because if you have one specific question, you won't sort of try to figure it out within the cycle, which is just like to find something very quickly. So for that, in the next few minutes that I have, I would like to show you how to use the annexes, basically the whole list of annexes are not that long, there are only five, about supporting the university, data documentation, tutorials, for example, for the founder of SNSF, that's specifically for how to draft uh, the data management plan, then the data management plus tools themselves, and last but not least, any other research uh, data management resource that we thought would be good as a starting point for the researchers. So if you as a new uh, researcher or someone that has a question, download this guide, you can start directly in the annexes and figure it out. For example, if you are looking for, is this specific support existing in the University of Bern, then you just go to Annex A. And then you see that here we broke it down into starting with us, basically open science, then we have the legal aspect, then we have IT security, but then in the guide itself, you already have the link to the CISO, the Chief Information Security Officer. Then the specifics for the IT services, uh, Unitectra, and other aspects such as, and this one I, do, I really don't know, so I'm glad that everything is already in the guide, so it's easier for us to guide a researcher. The Animal Welfare Office, uh, specifics about the Research Management Office, all about research integrity and ethics, the specifics about Incel Hospital. That, that's great for me because I've, since I never worked for there, if someone asks me, I can point them, here's a specific list of uh, connections just for example, the clinical trial unit. So the idea is Annex 1, let's say, gives you very quickly an access to where you should sort of start. Then another example, uh, most specifically for data management plans, because sometimes people know that they have to do a data management plan, but they don't know where to start, is about uh, Annex D. So basically in the Annex D, I sort of try to summarize it here, is describing that you have the option of doing a data management plan offline, but ideally you can just use an online tool. And for online tool, it also includes options of templates and even guides. For that, ideally, we're suggesting check out different tools because different tools give you different options, such as collaboration or even tracking the process. And to close the, the, the annex, we give some specific considerations about what should you think about when you're looking for a DMP tool. That is, if there is a requirement, for example, in the funding agency to do a specific type of tool, just use that tool. If there's a specific recommendation already in your institute, they just use this tool. And last but not least, make sure that you 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 choose a tool that gives you the possibility of the template that you're probably going to have to use. And well, the in the future, but we already put it in the template, is in cases that your founder or your institute or someone is already planning machine readable and machine actionable DMPs, you need to make sure that the tool 
is updated enough for you not to just only export a PDF, but also a JSON or XML or any other machine readable format. So you see, if you from zero start there, you at least have a starting point of how you're gonna have to deal with the data management plan. And last but not least here, the D1, as I call it, is the list of uh, DMP tools. So you can start from specifically DMP tools that have specific links to them. And in specific cases, such as, for example, the DMP online version that that's from the DCC, the Digital Curation Center, you have also a link to a direct training that is an official training for the tool. So if you're starting with the tool, not just you're starting Googling the tool, but you also have the first step for the thing. Regarding this, let me make a little bit of an advertisement here. Next week, there's an event for the DMP online community event, and I will be presenting there some ideas of how to evolve the tool and also DMP. And of course, another uh, typical tool would be Argos, and here's also a guide. That would be it for me, or that would be for us. Let's not forget that this is very general, so if it's enough for you or for someone that needs it to start, it's good enough. But if it's not enough, we're always available. So you always have the link to our website, to our newsletter, and if you have any opinion uh, survey-wise, you can also contact us. Us, I mean specifically for your domain, uh, Olga, and specifically but very general about data science and IT in general would be me. Thank you for your time. And I think the next point is questions and discussion.